Hey guys, my name is Shy, and I am back with a pick a deck reading. I'm going to do a full Celtic cross for each one of the decks. I don't want to say anything about the decks because I don't want to influence your <laughs> intuition. So go ahead. It's the Other Kin Tarot, the Osho Zen Tarot, Starman Tarot, and the Voyager Tarot. I guess I'll list them as one, two, three, and four. Hello, deck number one. Welcome to your reading. This was with the Other Kin Tarot. I will show you the box so that you know you're in the right spot. <laughs> I just saw the number 117. For me, that is a specific number my guides use to communicate with me, and it always means that you're on the right track, but especially to do with your personal sovereignty and your personal authenticity. That number is like stand your ground, be strong in yourself, be the leader you wish you had. Like forge, don't follow. I could, I could come up with a bunch of um, little aphorisms like that, but it's like, yes, this this moment that you're in is all about your independence and and your sovereignty and your authenticity. That's kind of a cool message to go along with this with this deck because the other Kintaro, all of the little. Uh, beings on each of these cards they're all hybrids right like kind of a little humanoid but with animals mixed in and some of them kind of otherworldly creatures as well so I'm gonna I wanted to shuffle and deal on the camera like I would for a private reading so just give me a minute to lay these all out <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. <sighs> yeah, you guys are about to manifest something, but it's not going to happen <laughs> unless you really own it. This is all about your personal journey. You're going on a journey of ownership, I almost want to say. I would not at all be surprised if any of you are starting a business or making a big move, even getting married or having, making a major, major shift in your consciousness. So <laughs> whatever it is for you, it's like it's all the same frequency. It doesn't really matter which way it's playing out in your life. So I'll kind of keep this vague and you can fit it into your own thing. You know, bottom of your deck is Ace of Cups. I feel like this is coming off of some kind of good news that you received or some kind of even like somebody asked you out on a date but like something recently just came in you had some kind of fresh start fresh event and it made you feel in love with life again feeling in love with life again this ace of cups so you're moving on from a really good place to be launching this journey and I keep saying journey because your center energy is this eight of cups 
she's turning her back on something, right? She's, she's turning her back on the way she used to be, I feel. Eight of Cups is often seen as a spiritual journey of some kind, but always one in which you leave something behind. I was really, I just noticed this card on this card for this first time just now that it, here she is, you know, turning her back on something, walking away, moving into the unknown future. And this green shadow around her almost looks like some kind of puff of smoke, like something is leaving her field. <laughs> almost like there was some kind of dark and dense energy that just like left, <laughs> got up and left. Uh, I don't, actually, I was going to say, I don't want to say that you guys had any kind of entity attachments, but maybe some of you, I don't want to freak people out, you know, <laughs> but I think for maybe a few of you, you did. And if it's not, you know, entity attachments, it's like, you know, just kind of pesky astral parasites or just your own limiting beliefs or your own negative thought patterns, what have you. But down at the bottom in your Akashic position, your deep past, your deep, like whatever's been going on with you, nine of swords, you know, so nightmares, persecution and psychic attacks. This can indicate like problems with entities attaching onto you, right? So, <laughs> but it, off like a wisp, wisp of smoke, like poof, gone. The problem is suddenly gone. And how, how do you want to make the most of this? How do you want to make the most of this? The struggle here, the challenge, this crossing card here is your challenge. The magician, okay? <laughs> you have infinity, this infinity symbol in the palm of your hand. This is your moment of initiation where you really, really own the fact that you are creating your reality. This is something that's been coming up for me. It's like we talk about how we're creating our own realities. We talk about how we are fully, you know, fully sovereign co-creators, blah, blah, blah. But then we still look around in our lives and be frustrated with where they're at. So this is like an invitation. This is a big moment where you can step up your ownership game of your life, where you can step up your manifestation game. And I think you could really go, go big with it. And the biggest problem is going to be the your brain going, oh, I can't manifest $10,000 in a month because that didn't work before. Oh, I can't launch my business because that didn't work before. Oh, I can't lose weight because I never lost weight before. All of those those past things. But it it's new now. You're in this, coming off this Ace of Cups. It's a new paradigm. You're moving off of this Nine of Swords. You're moving away from your nightmares. You're turning your back on all of that. You're turning your back on all that. And you have also been receiving healing, healing in your recent past. This star, star card is in your recent past. So you have been through the ringer. Uh, this is like a tower moment has been, you're recovering from a tower moment. We don't have the tower on here, but there has been some kind of challenge that you've recently been through. It's hard to say how recently, right? But it's like, you're in this moment now where you're really picking yourself up, dusting yourself off and moving forward. Right before that, you had some kind of good news, some blessing or just some love come in or just like a breath of fresh air. And before that was when you were healing from your tower moment. So you've been recovering from this catastrophe for a little bit. And now I think really give yourself credit for the fact that you are moving on from that. You might feel like the tower moment is still kind of dogging you or still kind of like, ugh, you know, like, am I going to fall back into these nightmares? Am I going to fall back into catastrophe? No, no, this is all onwards and upwards, guys. In fact, top of your, top of your thing here, top of your spread, <laughs> 10 of pentacles. This is why I said something about, you know, can you manifest $10,000? I just saw 444 four, four. <laughs> at the second I said um, $10,000. I saw 444. Four, four. So like dream big and understand that dreaming big won't actually stop your manifestation from coming true. It will actually make it more likely to come true. Sometimes we, we're not getting our manifestations because we're dreaming too small. And if we're dreaming too small, it's because we're sitting in fear and we're sitting in limiting beliefs. So we need to get rid of those fears and those limiting beliefs and all of that bullshit because those things are holding us back. So like go big. You know, <laughs> go big. And yeah, this is this is like where I'm at right now. I was just out there walking my dog and really going, okay, like I, I've really come a long way in my life, right? I, I have 
from my life being a disaster several years ago to being now pretty, pretty good. And I was like, I'm really happy with where I'm at and everywhere except money, right? I was like, I need more financial abundance. I've got abundance in other areas. I need financial abundance. It's like the one thing really like dragging me down, right? And so I found myself wanting to set little money goals. I was like, oh, you know, I just want to like manifest $2,000. And then I'm thinking like, why stop there, right? If I truly own the fact that I am creating my reality and if I truly own the fact that I can use the current energies that we are in to manifest things quicker and more easily than ever before, then why am I stopping at two grand? So, you know, I declared to myself that I'm going to manifest 10 grand. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, but I'm like sharing my experience of my day and the fact that I'm setting this intention for myself because if you guys do it along with me, if we all decide like right here, right now that we're going to decide to manifest 10 grand, we got this 10 of pentacles right here. Like, let's do this. Like, are, are, are you with me? Let's each, let's everybody manifest 10 grand. How awesome would that be? <laughs> right? Let's just decide we're going to do it. I, I'm, I really realized that I have gotten really good at manifesting spiritual experiences. I, I can now count on the fact that the next new moon or the next full moon or the next equinox or the next solstice or just like the next Friday, whatever it is, I can count on these like breakthroughs in consciousness and new like soul gifts coming in, new memories coming in. I can always, now I trust that always, always, always new spiritual experiences are coming through for me. And I, I couldn't, I never used to be able to do that. I used to be an atheist, but here I am. I completely changed my spiritual experience and I've gotten comfortable and confident in that. And I was like, why can't I apply that to money? <laughs> so that is my current experiment. That's what I'm doing. And I would love it if we all did that. I would, I want everybody to have 10 grand. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> so, uh, and it's just, it's really reflected in the cards. In fact, it's funny that I'm talking about let's co let's all co-create 10 grand for ourselves, right? Because Three of Cups, this is coming together with your soul family and just swirling around in a vortex of love. <laughs> awesome. And your self energy right now, like you as an individual, your your internal personal energy is the world. You you want to manifest money? You want to, or like whatever it is, if, if you don't care about 10 grand, but you picked some other pie in the sky dream to manifest, you, you know, replace that, right? It doesn't need to be money if that's not what you're after. Ten of Pentacles in the world. This is like manifestation. This is bringing in this energy that you have floating around um, like in your light body and just bringing it into manifestation. <laughs> and it's, again, it's like it has all the possibility of working for you because your external environment, Eight of Wands rapid change the, the eight of wands is one of the quickest moving cards in the tarot now 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 fast 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 new 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 everything is shifting so fast um just when i was walking my dog i kind of got a glimpse of like my guides showed me why things are manifesting and shifting and changing faster now it's this is a, a weird example and i don't know if it'll make sense to anybody but um when I was in high school, I used to play bassoon, and which is an instrument I know that not very many people know anything about, but essentially it's a very big woodwind and the lowest notes are hard to play because they take a lot of air, <laughs> take a lot of effort, and you have to be very careful about how you hold your mouth essentially. And, and when you switch from the note to note to note on, in the very lowest register of the instrument, it's really difficult. You really have to pay attention because it's like, so much air is moving, right? Everything is just large and cumbersome. But when you get up to the higher register, the highest notes on the instrument, suddenly you can change notes really, really quickly and easily. And it's like a breeze and everything flows and is smooth because they're, it's like the air is moving faster and there's less difference between the notes. So I don't know what it, what is a better metaphor for that for people who don't play bassoon, <laughs> but it's like, you kind of can feel what I mean, right? The energies around us now are like lighter and freer and closer together. So it's like, instead of having to jump over a massive, like a really big log, you know, imagine you just have one log you need to jump over, but it's like 10 feet tall. It's this huge, big log, like a three meter tall in diameter log. And you have to clamber all over it. That was like the low, slow energies. But now we're getting to this point where the energies have gotten 
so much easier to manage. It's more like jumping over 10 sticks, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so that's, it's easier than ever. It's easier than ever before to make big manifestation changes. You can just whoop, right over them. And your hopes and fears, your biggest challenge here is you're afraid that you're gonna end up being like this Knight of Cups. Look at this dude. He's literally got his head in this bubble. That's what you're afraid of feeling. You're, you're afraid of giving a big, like, you're afraid of manifesting something big or for, afraid of trying to manifest something big because you'll feel silly when it doesn't work because you've tried it in the past and it didn't work before. And so try it now and you're gonna feel silly again. It's like you're afraid of just, and you're afraid of uh, feeling like, you know, somebody with their head in the sand or you're afraid of feeling like somebody who is ungrounded. It's like, you're just worried that you're feeling, feeling silly and out of touch. <laughs> so, I mean, just take that. The fact that that fear is like surfacing, that just means that this is your time to release that fear. This is your time to let go of feeling silly. This is your time to let go of worrying that people are going to tell you you're being flaky. <laughs> um, but I think this is, this is a little bit about worrying about how other people are going to see you, but really it's about just don't, don't, don't feel silly. Like you, there's no reason to feel silly if you try to manifest something and you fail. That was just, that was just a lesson. That's just how that worked out. And that just means something better is coming for in the future. So we're all letting go of our fears of failing to manifest. Let's just, let's just like grab those and toss those because <laughs> they're not serving us anymore. And we should just feel free to flow and experiment and manifest. And if our manifestation doesn't come through, perfect. We can trust the divine timing and move on to the next thing, right? <laughs> but clearly something is happening. Like something is going to come through for you because your outcome is judgment. Like, damn. Sorry for the awkward cut, but I actually felt really <laughs> like I should look in the book for this deck's particular write-up on this. Um, and I really liked the first sentence. It says, The judgment card is the clear note of a horn that shatters the quiet and rouses you from sleep. It announces an epiphany or awakening and urges you toward a period of self-evaluation and change. Often this card appears for people who have a calling, a strong inclination to be of service to others, or who are in pursuit of a difficult goal. These urges often get pushed down and ignored as you struggle to find stability, financial success, or fulfill obligations to others. You might see this card because your journey has come to a point of maturity and understanding. Judgment indicates that you may finally be ready to follow your dreams. So thank you. Um, author of this deck because that concluded this reading better than I could with my fumbling interpretation of judgment. So there you have it, guys. May we all manifest exactly what is most aligned. So I love you guys. Good luck. I'll see you later. Bye. Hello, deck number two. This is the Osho Zen Tarot. And I'm going to deal on the camera uh, as if this was a private reading. So just bear with me for a minute. Um, the theme of this deck is spirituality. This is just the ultimate ultra spiritual deck. <laughs> so I'm assuming that's what you guys are here for. <laughs> Slowing down. I'm going to draw all the cards before I talk about them. I like to be able to see the big picture. <laughs> Slowing down and turning in. <laughs> so you guys are in a spiritual cocoon. That is true. Or that is true. That was a weird thing to say. Um, <laughs> I meant to say that's for sure. <laughs> You guys' cards are funny. Oh. <laughs> I feel like you guys are frustrated with your 
spiritual progress, like with the evolution of your consciousness, um, patience. <laughs> um, and that's only because you're not appreciating how much is happening behind the scenes and under the surface and how much this slow period is really benefiting you. Okay. <laughs> I, I just had to laugh because does that look better? I think that looks better. It's hard to tell. The camera has trouble with this dark background, but I really felt like I was supposed to use it anyway. So we're just going <laughs> to forge ahead. I think we can still see. Um, what was I saying? I had to laugh because you guys got so many like slow down, go within the answers are within, you know, take, take it easy, <laughs> be patient, you know, meditate, go with the flow kind of cards. It's, it's really hilarious. Um, but I can feel like you guys were feeling <laughs> like, come on, give me something. Like, I, I feel like that's what you guys are saying, like to, to your guides, to the universe, give me something, make something happen. This is getting, this is getting a little ridiculous. I feel like you're saying, um, so you're, but so I do have good things to say that you will like to hear. So just bear with me, but your central energy, this is the thing that's happening, a slowing down. I just saw three, three, three. when I said that. This is the big theme of your life right now for this whole pocket of energy for your spiritual evolution. Slowing down. Slowing way down. Um, this guy, this tortoise here, that's you. And you might want to think, you know, about the tortoise and the hare. Remembering that the tortoise does win the race, right? That That's that's you right now. You are the tortoise, tortoise um, who will win the race in the long run. And your challenge here is to turn inwards, to really, really go within, to go inside, to meditate and to go into stillness and to learn to communicate with your, with yourself, essentially. Knowing that you can tune out of all of the noise, all of the distractions, and even all of the advice and information and spiritual guidance even, even things like this video, <laughs> um, kind of even putting those aside so that you can focus truly on what the universe is communicating with you and what is going on inside of you. That's the thing. There's so much happening inside of you and you're going to be in this still moment until until you've like learned the lessons of stillness. You guys are learning the lessons of stillness and you are coming to, you have already made a lot of progress. So if you've been in this cocoon for a long time, don't worry. You have been coming to this understanding. I'm just r really looking at this card. You have this bird sitting at the edge of this cage, getting ready to take off. That's what you guys are doing. I think you you are just, just about ready to take off and to join your feathered friends, right? To join your soul family. You're getting ready to fly, getting ready to fly, but <laughs> you're being called to sit in patience. We have even more of these slow cards here, more of these weight cards. You and your center energy right now Seven of Rainbows. This would be the Seven of Pentacles. You can say right on it, it says Patience. <laughs> the Seven of Pentacles is one of those like sit and meditate and do nothing else cards. I used to get it constantly um, when I first woke up and I was in this weird spot in life where I just basically sat in my kitchen, which was a really horrible, terrible kitchen in a horrible, terrible place I lived. And I just sat there and I just meditated. And when I wasn't meditating, I was just staring at the wall in silence, like with my dog in my lap. I did nothing, like literally nothing. So if you guys feel like you're doing nothing, see if you can do even less. I know that might seem counterproductive, but it's like you're not going to be able to move forward until you learn the lessons of stillness. So if you're feeling like, oh, you know, I haven't left the house in two months. I just sit around in my underwear all day and eat pizza and binge Netflix. <laughs> or I just kind of, you know, flitter a time my time away doing this, this and that. I'm not doing anything. Well, on some level, you're still actually doing something. Like there's something that you're, there is still an energy of busyness and of distraction around you that could be let go of. And I mean, 
I don't care if you let go of it, <laughs> but these cards, like your guides, you were led to this reading because the universe wants you to let go of it and to really just sit in profound stillness. Like, this is like somebody who is, whose guides are screaming at them to meditate. <laughs> and if you really don't want to meditate, then what is meditative for you? It doesn't need to be meditation, like, like traditional mindfulness meditation. Can you just sit and stare at the wall? You want to journal? Do you want to like build a puzzle or something or whatever is meditative for you, whatever puts you into that state, state of emptiness, you need to get acquainted with emptiness, like stare into the void until the void begins to stare back and really releasing all of your fears about what's happening in your future, what's happened in your past, needing to live moment to moment. This is your, this bottom card. I mean, you could think of it as your deep past, your Akashic position, your grounded energy. I think of it as just like this depth that you're moving out of. It's interesting with your you guys, I feel like the cards that represent your past, you're still kind of in the past energy. You know, like this this understanding, this bird getting ready to fly is in your recent past, but I feel like you're still kind of there. This moment to moment, which is in your deep, deep, deep energies, I feel like you're still kind of there. And your 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 near future, this ordinariness. <laughs> so things aren't going to radically shift for you immediately of course with the speed that we are shifting realities and changing every, everything and manifesting and jumping timelines it's like i don't want to give you any kind of time projection because who knows everything is like time time is time is all over the place right now so don't worry too much about the time but it's like the pocket of energy in right now is this stillness and then you're going to move for a pocket of energy where i think that actually becomes your normal moving into a like needing to normalize this state of stillness. Yeah, it's like you you need to bring the silence and really like pull it right inside of you. Find the silence that is already within you. What I was saying something about why why are you guys still like, like attached to the past? That's that I I don't know why. I don't know like what cords are tying you to the past. I guess it, you know, it's different for all of you, so I, I can't get really get a grip on what exactly is going on with that. But you guys are somehow tied to the past, and that is how that is why you're sinking deep, deep, deep down into this silence and this stillness because that will that's the only way you can detach yourself from that. It's like you need to sit and be completely isolated in some senses so that all the, the cords that bind you to your past and to your environment they need to be dissolved this is like dissolving you of the things that are tying you to things that make you not free you need to be dissolved of the bonds that restrain you so that you can be free so that you can be free and the card i've been staring at this whole time and haven't mentioned yet but i'm excited to mention is this thunderbolt <laughs> okay <laughs> This is what's happening behind the scenes. You guys are getting zapped with massive amounts of energy. Like, <laughs> the plasma that is, uh, like, engulfing the earth right now, passing through us, you guys are highly sensitive to it. Um, you're all going to be watching this at different different times so different astrological events different energetic events are all happening but you guys are receiving massive upgrades behind the scenes it's if you're relatively new to your spiritual awakening that's why this is happening it's like you're getting boosted you're getting boosted is, is, is what comes to mind you are receiving more energy than people normally would so that you can accelerate your evolution. It's like, this is time for you to propel forward. You're, you're kind of skipping through time. I'm being shown like a rock skipping on a lake. You're skipping through time. You're skipping through time. So it feels like nothing's happening, but really on an energetic level, you're being transformed. You're integrating massive downloads 
I can only imagine that for a lot of you, your ascension symptoms are out of control, feeling really fatigued or feeling like you can't sleep, <laughs> you know, feeling weird pains in your body, like electric shocks, uh, ringing in your ears, all kinds of crazy stuff could be happening because this is like intense, intense activations, intense activations coming at you from all angles. And you need to be able to sit in stillness in order to integrate that. The more you push yourself, the less effective anything is going to be. <laughs> need to be sitting in stillness so that you can process all of this. Like that's your job right now is to process your energetic upgrades. However, those are happening for you that that's, that's your project. You need to process those energetic upgrades. <sighs> Let's see. And your environment, two of fire possibilities. So many timelines are open for you guys right now. Uh, there are actually so many choice points presented to you right now. I think that's actually why you are being called to not choose anything because you are evolving so fast that if you were to take action and go, okay, you know, screw this sitting around and waiting, I'm going to act on this. I'm going to move in that direction. I'm going to take that. But it's like there would be no point in you going in that direction because... <laughs> that was funny. Did you guys hear what my husband said from the next room? Um, I don't, I think he's playing a video game and I paused and he just said mystic wind, mystic wind. <laughs> That's got to be relevant to somebody. I don't like the, what's going on with the colors on this thing. It's glowing weird. I'm just going to turn that off. Um, what was I saying? I got majorly distracted. Wow, that was like my thought train just de <laughs> completely derailed by that mystic wind that blew in. So, okay, your guys and your possibilities. There's no point in choosing anything right now or putting yourself specifically into a timeline or even solidifying your identities in any way because whatever you guys choose right now, tomorrow you're going to be a completely different person with a completely different set of possibilities, with a completely different set of codes, with a completely different set of identities it's like all of it so don't bother choosing anything right now that is too too permanent because it's going to be irrelevant for you tomorrow you're just you're just going to blow past it that's another one of the reasons why you're sitting in stillness because it's like like you need to let the train get to the train station before you get off of it there's no point in bailing like if if you're on a train ride that's taking too long right and you're bored there's no point of just going like ah forget this and bailing and just getting off the train like what good did that do you <laughs> now you're in the middle of the wilderness and you like got off the train right it's better to just suck it up and sit on the train and wait for the train to get to the train station and then disembark um hopes and fears the miser. Interesting. <laughs> you guys are both afraid of being stuck in the mud and you're also afraid of having to move out of it. <laughs> of course, you know, even when we are in situations that we don't like, on some level, we're still kind of liking it. Right? <laughs> It's like you get in a car accident and you broke your leg and now you're stuck on the couch and you can't work and you have all these problems and then you have to go to physio and then you have to figure out how to pay your rent because then you can't work, stuff like that. Well, sure, you don't like any of that, but on some level, you probably liked, you know, sitting on the couch for two weeks binging Netflix, even though you didn't really, right? You guys know what I mean? It's like on some level, you can still kind of appreciate the stupid situations that you're in, even if they're, even if you're not liking them. So <laughs> I think that's kind of where you guys are at. It's like, you don't really want to be in this slowdown period, but at the same time, you are getting something out of it. So just be okay with that. I don't think there's too much more to say about that. Just, just be okay with wherever you're at because don't worry. I, I love it. I love it when the outcome card is good in the Celtic cross. Your outcome, celebration, okay? Three of water. This is partying with your soul family, throwing your arms up in the air and celebrating. Everything is going to work out great. You're, you're going to feel full of love, full of freedom, full of friendship, full of romance, full of family, what, whatever it is. This is like celebration. You're going to be celebrating when this is all over. 
bam. <laughs> End of story. I don't think I need to add any more than that because you'll be celebrating when it's over. So I hope you guys get to your celebration point exactly when it is most aligned. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Hey, deck number three. This is the Starman Tarot. This deck is all about aliens and the galaxy and all of those cool fun things. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny. I used to feel like I shouldn't talk about starseed things if like the title of the video didn't make it clear it was about starseed stuff. I felt like I shouldn't spring that on people, but I'm kind of over that. So I'm going to go <laughs> right ahead and say that y'all are starseeds, whoever picked this. I know like a huge chunk of my audience is star seeds anyway like already already know that and in my opinion the vast majority of anybody watching me is a star seed even if they don't know it so i'm gonna just continue with that in mind <laughs> let's find out what's going on with you in the galaxy king of wands I'm gonna get all the cards out before i talk so just please bear with me while I try to shuffle these impossibly large cards It's like all people. <laughs> this is bizarre. I've never seen anything. I've never seen this anything like this before. This is weird. Okay, there's one that's not. <laughs> Okay, there was a uh, random message that popped out. I don't think those cards were part of the spread, but something that you are confused about in the physical, something something that you have been trying to come to a decision over, you've been trying to figure something out and you're gonna find clarity on that very soon. Like that, that problem is gonna dissolve itself and is going to go away. So also oh, that Queen of Pentacles came, came out again. <laughs> okay can I get these all on there these cards are so big they're like hard to fit okay this is kind of uh kind of insane so your whole center thing here <laughs> it's all people king of wands king of pentacles <laughs> prince of wands princess of wands and the Empress and even the crossing card is the chariot, which, you know, there's a charioteer. You're the charioteer. <laughs> uh, this is like seriously so, so many people and it's like they're all aliens. <laughs> okay. They're like, I don't, I don't really feel like these are humans. Um, these are like your guides, your alternate selves, like your 5D selves or you from other lives or your galactic guides, like your star family, this is serious things happening with you and your personal team, you and your personal guidance, like so much going on. Um, and you are at the center of it all and you are being challenged to make a galactic shift because I got to jump all the way to the end. The outcome card is the tower. So I know that can be freaky. You know, we like to have tower moments in the past, but you guys are blasting straight at one. 
You have a tower moment coming, like it's coming. Um, but this, this is like a good news tower moment. If I got, if this was me and I, this is partially for me, I feel like it's really difficult for a reading to come through me that doesn't somehow resonate with something I'm going through, right? Uh, that's just, that's just kind of the way I, I feel it works for me. So some, something big is about to happen, like on a galactic level. Okay. Even, even, I mean, and I say galactic just kind of is like a catch, catch all phrase. I mean, yes, it's something's going to be shifting on the galactic level, but in order for that to be happening, it's also shifting inside of yourself with your own spiritual journey. And it'll also be happening on like much, much, much higher non-physical layers of consciousness. This is like, everything is blasting out of the water. So this is the spread of a star seed who has been waiting for something big to happen <laughs> and it's finally going to happen guys. And it's, um, <sighs> it's like that this is it. This is like your big, like your, your big activation. Something is finally going to come through and it, it's going to really confirm everything for you everything is going to change after this you're, you're you're blasting right up to some kind of big event like a big part of why you're here um this is all about you like stepping up okay your center energy is this king of wands so that's who you have been becoming and now this is you okay this king of wands energy this this total powerhouse of fire and light and manifestation and sovereignty that is you you know so if you haven't quite owned up to that fact fact yet time to do that because that's where you, that's where you're at you know you have in the past in your recent past been more embodying this king of pentacles this kind of king of the earth this you know grounded reality but now you're moving into just fire moving into this fire energy of owning the world your your crowning energy is this empress and so as you can as you probably noticed i'm switching between <laughs> interpreting these all these people cards um as being you know aspects of you and external aspects but of course it's all one and the same right <laughs> um because a lot of these characters that are surrounding you and you might be aware of them you might not be you know maybe you can look at this and go okay this this empress here this empress like what does this mean to you right is that you? <laughs> is this one of your past selves where you were like a galactic queen? <laughs> is this like your mother from a past life? Is is this the divine mother herself? Is this Isis? Like who who is the empress to you? This is this, you know, it'll play out in any number of ways, but everything is coming down through this divine fem like embodied divine feminine energy. And you're upgrading from this in your deep past princess of wands. For this to be down here, it's, uh, this is a great card, but you can see how it's this growth moving forward, this growth moving forward. You're moving on from being a successful grounded person and you're moving on from being a star seed who thinks of them as like a small person, a small star seed, just another little star seed who can't make much of an impact and who is just here struggling and confused and trying to wake up. You're moving on from those things and you're owning your own power and you're learning how to rise. You're learning how to ride this chariot. This chariot is your challenge. This is the crossing card. This is what you need to overcome, what you need to learn to do, I think in this case, is ride the chariot. For some of you, this is like learning to astral travel. For others of you, this is learning to navigate your lives with perfect precision, like never doubting your intuition, always trusting your gut, always knowing exactly, like trusting your inner knowing flawlessly and knowing that it's your like the perfection of your soul that helps you navigate that not not just helps you but enables you to navigate your life perfectly like perfect navigation perfect navigation perfect navigation through the 4d bridge like you're 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 riding your way to 5d you're riding your way to new earth you're riding your way to your multi-dimension your multi-dimensional nature 
and just like learning to do that, like remembering, remembering that you always do it, remembering that you are here to do that, to do that perfectly. And you're going to be getting like a spark. I'm looking at this Prince of Wands in your near future. It, this feels like some kind of spark is going to be coming through to inspire you, to egg you on, to give you that little push that you need. I think, you know, this could come through an experience you have like on the astral in some way. And please don't be mystic wind. Did you hear my husband in the next room? Mystic wind. <laughs> mystic wind. You're going to be riding the mystic wind, okay? <laughs> the mystic wind. It's like... This reminds me so much of an experience I had a few days ago. I suddenly felt like there was a wind blowing from the Pleiades. I just, and so I just like opened up my arms and like leaned into it and I could feel this like magical blast of energy. I don't know if, if we were receiving any specific kind of, you know, well-known blast from the Pleiades, but I could feel it and I could feel it blasting me. And I just stretched out my arms and like accept it. And I was like, ah, oh, I can ride this out. So there's like, there's this wind, this burst going to be coming through for you. And all you have to do is ride it. Your center self, this is where your insecurities are showing, okay? Your, your self, you're like your, your individual energy right now, four of pentacles. Feeling bored, feeling stuck, feeling trapped in the physical, wondering when are you going to break out of your physical body? When are you going to have more magical, mystical, alien, starseed experiences? Like when, when is it going to be happening? When is it happening for you? I can feel you guys going like, when is when? Well, it, it, it is going to be happening. You're on your way to this tower moment. Like if you're bored and I think you guys are a little bit bored, feeling a little stagnant, feeling like things are a little bit too much the same. Um, so don't worry, the tower moment is coming. Like <laughs> the boredom will, will not stick around forever. And you're a bit, you know, <sighs> facing a certain amount of confusion, this moon card, feeling a certain amount of confusion with what's real and what's not. I can feel you guys looking around you going, is any of this real? <laughs> is this, is my entire experience just a dream and I'm actually the only conscious being in the universe? <laughs> I can feel you going, or maybe I'm just entirely crazy and I have just been on one long psychotic tr break and I'm actually in a psych ward and I'm going to wake up and realize that all of this is crazy. It's like, um, really having to navigate these illusions and really questioning, questioning everything, really questioning everything, wondering like, what, <laughs> what, <laughs> wondering what. And so when you're faced with this, this is actually your initiation. This is the point. Um, when you're faced with these, all these confusions, it's so that you tune back into your heart space and you tune back into your own internal guidance system, because that is the only thing you have that you can trust. You can't trust anything else. There's like no point looking around at your world, trying to figure out what's real, real and what's not, because that, that, that'll, that'll never work. <laughs> it'll never work. And I have tried, guys. Oh my God, I have tried. Okay. <laughs> um, like I have gone down that journey of trying to figure out what is real and what is not by looking at my material world. And it just doesn't work. At the end of the day, everything will always be unraveled and you'll always learn a lesson of trust yourself, trust yourself, trust yourself. So tuning back into your own inner guidance system. And th that is actually what you're hesitating. You're hesitating on that because your hopes and fears is this queen of pentacles. Oh yeah. Didn't, didn't I say, what, what, what did I say? I can't even remember anymore. There was like the 10 of swords and it came up with the two of swords and the queen of pentacles. And I took that to mean that you have been confused, two of swords, about something going on in your external reality, queen of pentacles, or you've been confused about your own identity. Maybe you can be been confused about who you are being confused about whether you're a human or an alien or like what, what, what even is an identity? This could be a big identity crisis in an, in your own self, like really questioning everything, like everything, right? What does it even mean to think that you are somebody or something or anything? Like 
yeah, I, I could keep rephrasing that a bunch of ways and I'm sort of tempted to, but I'll move on. I think you guys get the point. <laughs> um, but that, that came up with the Ten of Swords, so that means that that confusion is going to end. Okay, I'm sorry about the awkward cut, but it's actually quite a bit later. I had to get up and leave. I'm sure the camera caught my dog barking. Basically, my a family member came home and all hell broke loose. A whole bunch of chaos happened <laughs> in the other room and it got too noisy and I couldn't film. And it all gave me a clue about what is going to be happening with you guys. I can't remember what I was talking about. Something about f fears or something, but it was it's all, all le leading up to this tower moment. And now I know what that tower moment is going to be about because when my family member came home they brought with them, they had just checked the mail and picked up a package, and it was a package from my mom from back home. I, I, I don't live in my home country anymore. <laughs> um, and I got a whole, this whole package full of like candy from home and a new jacket and stuff for my mom, and it was just so nice and came in perfect timing. And that is essentially what's going to be happening for you guys. There's going to be a person coming through who initially really shakes things up and causes a bunch of chaos for you and you might be like oh this is this is nuts why is this all happening i was doing a thing and now i'm all distracted and now everything's chaotic right it's that tower moment coming through but you're you're going to be getting a package from home <laughs> and for you guys like this could play out entirely energetically right you could have a being come through you could sense their presence you could feel them in meditation it could happen in a dream you might not even ever remember this happening but you're going to be having a contact with you know, some kind of consciousness and they're coming through and bringing you, bringing you a gift from home, from home, whatever home means to you, right? Your home planet, your home dimension, whatever. Like, it's like reconnecting with your soul family through this transmission, through a gift that is coming for you. And it's going to be like, you could be unlocking past life memories. You could be unlocking future life memories. You could be reclaiming your soul gifts. You could be getting on a spaceship and flying somewhere. You could be traveling the universe on the astral, like you know, big things will grow out of this gift that you're receiving. And it, this is all, just remember when this tower moment comes through, it's a gift from home. It is to bring you a gift from home. You're being aligned with your gift from home. And like, what more could you want, right? That That's like the perfect outcome for, <laughs> for a starseed reading is, you know, receiving contact from home, receiving gifts from home and just there you go. <laughs> I don't think I have anything else to say about that. So <sighs> sending you guys so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, deck number four. Welcome to your reading. This is the Voyager Tarot and there is something about you guys. I'm not <laughs> entirely sure what yet. Essentially, I recorded the video for the first three decks earlier today, and then I got interrupted, and here I am hours later. So somehow, you guys are like the, the odd group out, the, the fourth thing, and that is extra weird because, see, I got these three, like, three stones here. Just when I sat down earlier, I put these three rocks down, and I had a fourth one, <laughs> but I put it there, and I looked at it, and I was like, something about that's bothering me, so I picked it up and, like, put it over there. So... I don't know, do you guys feel <laughs> like an outsider or like like the forgotten piece or like you're coming back to something that you haven't been part of in a long time? There, there's something a little bit strange <laughs> about this. Like not, not in a bad way or anything, but just it's noteworthy. I'm curious to see what your cards are. I also haven't used this deck for anything at all in several months. It's kind of been sitting at the bottom of my stack. So let's see. I'm going to draw these all before I talk about them. So just give me uh, a minute to get these all laid out.
<laughs> it's so interesting seeing this unfold. Okay. Um, well, you guys are in a fear facing moment. This is your time to face your fears. <laughs> that It's like you've been in some, a period that felt like a deep state of confusion. That deep state of confusion was a very long, very protracted healing process. It might not have felt like you were doing any healing, but that You were on a journey back to yourself. You're on a journey back to yourself. And you have reached yourself. <laughs> like you have come, you have come back to yourself at this point. And it's almost like you're standing face to face with yourself. You haven't quite sorry, that must have been loud when I dropped that. <laughs> it it's like you haven't quite merged back into wholeness yet back into oneness but you're looking at yourself in the mirror so i'm saying this because your center energy is this two of cups and i feel like this is an internal thing going on with you guys um this equilibrium you're coming back into equilibrium you know two of cups can sometimes be like you know a lover's type of card but i feel like like you guys have been on an internal journey because your recent past is the star but it's in reverse. <laughs> so the healing journey, the, the healing and the, the uh, inspiration, the inspirational healing of the star is, is ha has been happening on an internal way. And I think it's been kind of strange, a bit of a strange journey. Like life has taken you on all these twists and turns and finally gotten to you to where you are. And it, maybe you thought that you were at the end of the road and that you could finally take a breath and relax and that everything was going to be working out from here, but there's still like a blip. There's still this knot you're having to work through and it's your challenge. The crossing card in the middle, seven of cups here, it is subtexted as fear. So the, the challenge here is to face your fears, whatever those fears are, they can be coming in any strange variety. Um, but that that's it. This is, this is your moment to face your fears. Trying to find out about the lighting here. Yeah, that looks less washed out. Weird. It looks better with less light. Okay. <laughs> so this long period of inner journeying, this inner work, I feel like some of you guys, it just keeps coming up, have been like really, really, really through something like serious physical trauma like, or like extended, like deep poverty or severe mental health challenges or like abusive relationships or addictions. Like, I feel like this can go, go, you know, pretty extreme for some of you. Um, and it's like, you're like, why, <laughs> why, why, why was this? Why did I have to go on this journey? There's no way I could ever have chosen this journey, but I mean, you, you did. And you, you actually were the inventor of your own destiny here. Man of crystals. This is, would be the King of swords inventor, the inventor. I feel like before you incarnated, you chose this really challenging journey because it would help you condense many, 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 many soul lessons into a very short amount of time. It's like you have compressed the patterns of struggle that you experienced over hundreds of lifetimes before this. And in this lifetime, you're like, okay, I need to like live all of those patterns out so I can resolve them and let them go. I need to get those that all done in like 30 years or something like that. You know, however long it's been for you, it's been very short because you've been condensing it all in like very, very intensely. And, but now, you know, that you've made it far enough, you're synchronizing with your own soul, doing the soul searching, doing the soul healing, your higher self is coming in and now it's time to receive some nurturing. 
now you're starting to understand that there is invisible support available to you. This is like nurturing coming in from the unseen. This is like your higher self, your guides, your ancestors, you know, whoever you feel is out there, whatever kind of energies are out there supporting you that you can't see, that's where the, 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 the energy, like the support, the nurturing is coming from. So even if you can't feel any support in your physical world, it's coming in from the outside. That 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 phrase, from the outside, before I turned on the camera, I was thinking like pile four is somehow, it feels like you're coming in from the outside. And my cat wants in from the outside, so I need to go let him in one sec. What was I saying? Sorry, I'm gonna try to stop messing with that stone because it's loud when I drop it. I'm sorry about that. I'm a hopeless hand talker here. <laughs> um, your near future is six of worlds synergy. Synergy. This is really moving into that cooperation. This is actually uh, the, the su this support that we were just talking about it being kind of non-physical. This is the support coming in on a physical level. So after you have to face these fears first because your fears are actually blocking you from receiving the help and support and love and guidance and money and whatever it is that you're looking for in your environment your fears are actually preventing you from receiving it you're like all whatever whatever you're afraid of that and the frequency of fear is clogging you up so that you cannot bring in what you have been manifesting you know it's like you're sitting, if you're sitting around, if it's money, just because that's an easy example, right? If you're sitting around needing some more money, but you're actually, <laughs> and, and it just keeps kind of bouncing off of you or just never coming your way, it's because your fear of going without money is actually like, has actually filled you up. It's like you can't pour water into a glass if the glass is full of mud, <laughs> right? So that's why it's important to face these fears. That's why these fears are coming up so you can release them and then you can move into this synergistic, symbiotic, energy in your near future and and then everything changes for you guys then there's a big shift it's like you're getting to this place where you're cleaning up the mess of your physical reality like uh, it reminds me of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, you need to have that base of the pyramid built with all of your physical needs, right? And then you can have the things that are um, a little bit more important. And then the things that are a little bit more important, you need to go up up the, the pyramid, right? You guys are getting your kind of base of your pyramid handled. So you're going to be having, you know, physical security. You're going to be having a certain level of comfort. You're going to be having, you know, uh, enough support in your life. And everything's going to be getting to this level of equilibrium, right? You're going to be coming into feeling stable and safe that's you're, you're going to be feeling good and that is going to allow for your consciousness to start to evolve like an accelerated evolution because you're sitting here as this hierophant this is you this is your energy hierophant and this is when everything gets weird guys <laughs> this is when it gets weird so I don't know where you guys are on in your physical like on your spiritual journey or on your personal development or any of that because it's going to be different for everybody so but your 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 perspective on reality is going to be shifting and you're going to be realizing that you are the only authority that you can rely on that even that you want to rely on really questioning everything questioning everything and all that's that's actually one of the reasons you've been through these experiences because it is has taught you to rely on yourself and to really disconnect from the narratives that the other humans around you have constructed you're tuning into the fact that you are your own inner authority you are your own inner authority you're your own hierophant it's like the energy of the Protestant Reformation, right? Really, kind of realizing that you don't need to go see a priest to talk to God. You can talk to God yourself, right? That was how people felt. That was like how Martin Luther felt and everybody else during the Protestant Reformation, like reclaiming their um, ability to, you know, talk to the divine without an intermediary, right? So this is you. You're, you're realizing... 
some of your safety nets are going to be dropping away, but it's because you don't want them anymore. You don't need them anymore. You realize you never need them and those safety nets were actually holding you back. It's like crutches. You might have some crutches that are dropping away. Um, this reminds me a lot of Like, imagine you always wore a knee brace because all the doctors always told you that you had a bad knee and you needed to wear a knee brace. <laughs> so you wore this knee brace every day, every day, every day, and it really bothered you. You know, it, it gave you skin problems and it was uncomfortable and it messed up your clothes and you hated it, but you had to keep wearing it because, you know, otherwise your knee was going to give out. And then one day your knee brace breaks, but you're so poor you can't buy a new one. Or like, maybe you just are in some kind of situation where you can't get another knee brace right away, so you have to go without it. And you realize that after a few days of walking without your knee brace, that your muscles in your knee, uh, in your leg, start to strengthen. And that allows your leg to support your knee by itself. And ultimately, you don't actually need the knee brace. Wearing the knee brace was weakening your knee muscles so that you needed the knee brace. But if you didn't wear the knee brace, then you would grow and grow stronger and strengthen yourself so that you did, don't do not need the knee brace yeah i just happened to reach over and flip up the the deck that this was from when i finished shuffling you guys and the bottom of the card is strength so you've been developing your inner strength and now all of your crutches and your knee braces are coming off and you're finding that you never needed them to begin with and look at this your environment it's like everybody is an actor this is not a bad card or anything but in in this this particular configuration here you're looking around and you're realizing how fake everybody is and you guys are getting like massively disillusioned with people and with social narratives getting really 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 done with it and if this is for some of you this is just kind of a general thing this is just a vibe you're feeling like with your friends or like with the media for some of you this is going to be very specific um maybe it is like if you're farther along like if you've been really walking your spiritual path for a long time this is like you're suddenly having <laughs> almost like a crisis of faith, but it's not actually a crisis of faith because you're actually just realizing what you should actually have that trust in. And it's just trusting yourself, trusting yourself and your higher self, right? No longer, uh, it's like there might have been some like influencers or, like psychic channels or energy workers or somebody, right? Some like new age person that you were following and maybe you really resonated with them for a long time. And maybe you really uh, found a lot of like support and benefit and guidance from following them. And suddenly you're realizing that they seem to vibe weird for you and you're like growing away from that. And that I would say is completely normal. It doesn't have to be a big deal. You don't have to be like, oh, this person is, you know, preaching all of these, <laughs> like teaching all of these things that they shouldn't be teaching and yada, yada, yada. It can just be like, oh, okay. You've actually evolved past them. You've actually evolved past them. Like the, the apprentice has overtaken the master and you can just leave them behind, you know, unfollow them on all of your social media and just carry on, just carry on because you, you've just grown past them. Their, your energies have diverted. This could be your friends too. If your energies are diverting from people, then just allow them to divert. You know, you can go on your own journey and you're a little bit hesitant to do that because you, your hopes and fears is the tower right? It's like you're ready for your tower moment, but you're terrified of your tower moment because who wants to see their whole reality crumble around them? <laughs> this tower moment, I feel like it could be bigger than some. Sometimes a tower moment is like a really, really insane fight with your partner, you know, and somebody ends up sleeping in their car and, you know, stuff like that. That that can be a tower moment. Um, Sorry, my throat is getting weird and my throat has been weird since I started with your cards. You guys are... So there's something going on with your guys' throat chakra. I mean, just, uh, I'm just having a drink, trying to... <clears throat> your throat chakra and your sacral chakra. I, I can feel both of those acting up. Uh, and those have not been bothering me at all today until I sat down with your cards. So creative self-expression guys, creative self-expression. This tower moment might involve you really like putting your art out there, putting yourself out there, really standing up for your, like really communicating who you are. 
really facing your fears of being seen for for like throat and sacral to come up with this fear facing on some level you guys are like coming out of some kind of closet or <laughs> putting your putting yourself out there in all your weird shining glory and it is it's going to get easier. It's going to get easier because this tower moment is going to help you clear out the gunk in your throat chakra and it's going to help you optimize your sacral chakra and then you'll be so much more flowing and free. And this is such a good thing because the tower moment will come, you will face your fears, your chakras will be cleared out, not entirely, but you know, a little bit more than they were yesterday. <laughs> and that's all we can ever ask for, right? So, and then, and then, these fears will no longer resonate with you because your throat chakra will no, be, no longer be full of all these blocks from all these lives and your sacral chakra will no longer be preventing you from accessing your creative potential and your passion in life. So once this clears, you will be feeling so much more passion, so much more self-confidence, so much more like happy and excited to express yourself, You'll be feeling so much more flow of love and, you know, to clear your sacral chakra, then you'll be coming into this equilibrium, this two of cups, you know, water, like cups is water, you know, water is associated with the sacral chakra, that flood and flow of creative energy. It's like, yeah, so not only you'll be able to feel to experience your passion and feel your passion and you will also be able to communicate that passion to others and you will be the player you're <laughs> you will no longer be an observer of the game you will now be a player of the game the child of worlds you will be reborn with this excitement and this enthusiasm for life and you will feel empowered to play the game player you know and it's it's funny that actor comes up player you know we can think of player of a game but we can also think of a player as in like a stage actor is a player right before people use the word actor it was like you were a player on the stage so a more natural way of being seen a more natural way of being seen, whatever that means, being seen for your own natural self, being able to be on stage and to be a player without feeling like a fraud, without feeling like an actor. You can think about the differences between like a player on the stage and an actor on in like a big budget Hollywood movie. <laughs> that, that analogy kind of works here. You guys are going to be authentic and intimate and passionate and it's you're going to be feeling the applause of the audience it's going to be good <sighs> i think i didn't draw oracle cards for anybody else but you guys are the odd ones out let me grab this I just want to see like if anything else wants to come through for you guys. Aww. <laughs> okay, loyal heart, two of cups, equilibrium. This doesn't have to be romantic for some of you. This is just syncing up with your soul family or your friend groups or whatever, but I think for somebody this is romance. <laughs> okay, we didn't we didn't get this two of cups and this loyal heart for no reason. Uh, you can basically run everything I just said in terms of a, a romantic relationship. If this, is a, if this is a romantic thing, if there is communication problems in your relationship, I mean any interpersonal relationship really, right? But if this is a, if this is, a, if this is about romance for you, all of this is happening so that you and this other person drop your masks you will be dropping your masks and you'll be able to communicate freely. <laughs> you know, we got sacral chakra and throat chakra, right? Those cleared up. Well, that's going to drastically improve your love life, right? Your love life and your communication in your relationship. And you will be able to see each other for who you really are. So this card just flew out. Serendipity. Serendipity. Everything is going to be working out in 
perfect, beautiful timing. And that is the energy you will be leaning into. I was going to say it's like this beautiful new world is going to be coming up for you. And then we got milk and honey. This is, you know, the land of milk and honey. <laughs> this is you finally getting a vacation, having a day off with feeling like you have it all. Feeling like you have it all. So all you need to do, it's funny that this deck has plenty of negative cards in it, you know, negative quote unquote, by the way, but you got three of these beautiful, beautiful cards coming out. So I think that is meant to encourage you to work through these fears, these fears. Some, something about this, this is just making me stare at it making me stare at it. What is going on with these fears? I think some of you are confused and you feel like you don't actually have any fears <laughs> or you're sitting there going, this reading isn't for me. I don't have any fears that I'm not facing. I'm really good at facing my fears. I must have picked the wrong deck or this tarot reader doesn't know what she's talking about or the cards are wrong or something like that. I mean, that's all fine. Maybe that's true. But I, I just feel like somebody doesn't know what they're afraid of. You're like, why? This card fell out, why? You're wondering why you synchronized with this reading. Or you're wondering why you're afraid of the thing. Building blocks. Everything is coming together one block at a time. I think, first of all, this fear, it's not really about what's happened to you in this life. Although, of course, there will have been something in this life that triggers the fear or whatever. But the, the fear is rooted in your quantum lives. This is a pattern that has been playing out over and over again. So that's why you might feel really disconnected from it because it... It might not make sense. You might have some primordial phobia and your whole life you've wondered like, why I'm afraid of that. Nothing's ever happened about that, but I'm terrified of it. It's because it's happened in all of your quantum lives. And you might be sitting there right now going, oh, I, I don't really have, I'm not really afraid of anything. Well, that fear is going to, it's going to be coming up this tower moment. You might find out really all of a sudden that there's something you are terribly phobic of. You just literally never had a chance of running into it before. So, you know, that seems like a bit of a terrible message to give somebody like oh you know uh just just wait you're gonna find out how afraid you are of something so uh you know I don't I don't really like having to say that but I I feel pretty good about this whole reading I know you guys are this fear is just coming up to be purged it's not coming up to plague you it's not coming up to torment you it's not even coming up so that you can be afraid of it it's coming up so that you can release it once and for all it's like I think in a recent past life, you have basically dealt with it. Like, for example, uh, in one of my recent past lives, I was a slave and I freed myself from slavery in that life. I escaped um, and found my freedom, like I claimed it for myself. And so in this life, I don't really have baggage about that, but there has been like residue from that where like I really don't like being trapped if I feel like somebody is physically restraining me I will freak out like meltdown right like do, if, if anybody like tries to pin my hands down or something I would I would like completely just have a freak out about that even though I nothing in this life has ever happened to me um like that at all you know in a way that would give me trauma about it so it's like where did that come from well now I know it's from this past life as a slave so I don't really in this life have to clear out like slavery codes because I did that. I did that in, the, in a previous life and so it's mostly gone but there's like a little bit of residue and so every once in a while some kind of li little tower moment will come up and remind me <laughs> that I still do have this like lingering residual trauma about it and so that's kind of what I'm feeling with you guys. Something will come up and it's like it's, it's not here to re-traumatize you. It's here to help you just release that last residue. It's like you washed a glass <laughs> and there, but you did, you missed something. There was like a smudge still in the bottom of the glass, right? Imagine you're doing dishes and it, there's, so you just need to take that washcloth and like 
scrub out that smudge one more time. That's what this is about. So really, this is really good. This is about clearing out your fears and like purging your fears and clearing your throat and your sacral chakra. <laughs> and it's going to be good. It's going to totally be good. It's going to totally be worth it. And you're going to enjoy where it's going because serendipity, loyal heart and milk and honey is what originally came up for your kind of bonus messages about your near future. So um, good luck, guys. I, I am more than confident that you will absolutely work through your tower moment with much, much poise and confidence and clarity. So good luck, guys. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.